What to you is beautiful about mathematics? I love a mathematics that some people don't even think of as mathematics, which is beautiful, creative mathematics, where we look at maths in different ways, we visualize it, we think about different solutions to problems. A lot of people think of maths as you have one method and one answer. And what I love about maths is the multiple different ways you can see things, different methods, different ways of seeing, different, in some cases, different solutions. So that is what is beautiful to me about mathematics, that you can see and solve it in many different ways. And also the sad part that many people think that maths is just one answer and one method. Mm -hmm. So to you, the beautiful, the beauty emerges when you have a problem with a solution and you start adding other solutions, simpler solutions, mm -hmm. uh, weirder solutions, more yeah. interesting, some that are visual, some of that are algebraic, geometry, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say that you can take any maths area and make it visual. Mm -hmm. And we say to teachers, give us your most dry, boring maths and we'll make it a visual, interesting, creative problem. And turns out you can do that with any area of maths. And I think we've given, it's been a great disservice to kids and others that it's always been numbers, lots and lots of numbers. Numbers can be great, but you can think about maths in other ways besides numbers. Do you find that most people are better visual learners or is this just something that's complementary? What's the kind of the full spectrum of students mm -hmm. and the way they like to explore math, would you say? I mean, there's definitely people who come into the classes I do who are more interested in visual thinking and like visual approaches. But it turns out what the neuroscience is telling us is that when we think about maths, there are two visual pathways in the brain and we should all be thinking about it visually. Some approaches have been to say, well, you're a visual learner, so we'll give you visuals and you're not a visual learner. But actually, if you think you're not a visual learner, it's probably more important that you have a visual approach so you can develop that part of your brain. So you were saying that there's some kind of interconnected aspect to it. So the visual connects with the non-visual. Yeah. So this is what the neuroscience has shown us, that when you work on a maths problem, there are five different brain pathways and that the most high achieving people in the world are people who have more connections between these pathways. So if you see a maths problem with numbers, but you also see it visually, that will cause a connection to happen in your brain between these pathways. And if you maybe write about it with words, that would cause another connection, or maybe you build it with something physical that would cause a different connection. And what we want for kids is, we call it a multi-dimensional experience of maths, seeing it in different ways, experiencing it in different ways. That will cause that great connected brain. It, you know, there's these stories of physicists doing the same. I find physicists are often better at building that part of their brain of uh, using visualization mm -hmm. for intuition building because you ultimately want to understand the like the deepest secret underneath this problem. And for that, you have to, to intuit your way there. Yeah. And you, you mentioned offline that um, one of the ways you might approach a problem is to try to tell a story about it. Mm -hmm. And some of it is like legend, but I'm sure it's not always, is you know, you have Einstein uh, thinking about a train, you know, and the speed mm -hmm. of light. And, you know, that kind of intuition is useful. Yeah. You start to like imagine a physical world. Like how does this idea manifest itself in the physical world and then start playing in your mind with that physical mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. and think, is this going to be true? Is this going to be true? Right, right. Einstein is well known for thinking visually mm -hmm. and people, talk about how he really didn't want to go anywhere with problems without thinking about them visually. But the other thing you mentioned that sparked something for me is thinking with intuition, like having intuition about maths problems. That's another thing that's often absent in maths class, the idea that you might think about a problem and use your intuition, um, but so important. And when mathematicians are interviewed, they will very frequently talk about the role of intuition in mm -hmm. solving problems but not commonly acknowledged or brought into education. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Like, if, if you task yourself with building an intuition about a problem, that's what 
that's where you start to pull in like, um, what is the pattern I'm seeing? And mm -hmm. In order to understand the pattern, you might want to then start utilizing visualization. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it, that's all in service of like solving the puzzle, <laughs> like cracking right. it open yeah. to get the simple explanation of what, why, why things are the way they are, uh, as opposed to, um, like you said, having a particular algorithm that you can then execute right. to solve the problem. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, like, reasoning is really hard. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I love to value what's hard in maths instead of being afraid of it. We know that when you struggle, it's actually a really good time for your brain. You want to be struggling when you're thinking about things. So if it's hard to think intuitively about something, that's probably a really good time for your brain. I, I used to work with somebody called Sebastian Thrun, who mm -hmm. is a great sort of mathematician. You might think of him an AI person and... I remember in one interview I did with him, he talked about how they'd built robots, I think for the Smithsonian, and how they were having this trouble with them picking up white noise. Mm -hmm. And he said they had to solve it. They had to work out like, what's going on and how he intuitively worked out what the problem was. But then it took him three weeks to show it mathematically. I thought that was really interesting that how you can have this intuition and know something works it's kind of different from going through that long mathematical process of proving it, but so important. Yeah, it's, I think probably our brains are evolved as like intuition machines and the, uh, the, the math of like showing it like formally is probably an extra thing that we're not designed for. You yeah. see that with Feynman yeah. and the, his, um, I mean, it just, all of these physicists definitely you see um, starting with intuition, sometimes starting with an experiment, mm -hmm. and then the experiment inspires intuition. But you can think of an experiment as a kind of visualization. Right. Just like, let's let's take whatever the heck we're looking at and draw it, and, and draw like uh, the pattern as it evolves, as the thing grows, for n equals one, for n equals two, n equals three, and you start uh, to play with it. And then in the modern day, which I loved uh, doing, is you know you can write a program that then visualizes it for you, right? And then you can start exploring it programmatically, mm -hmm. and that that and then uh, you can do so interactively too. I I tend to not uh, like interactive because the way it takes way too much work because you have to click and move and stuff. I love to interact through writing programs, mm -hmm. but that's my particular brain, software engineer. So like you can you can uh, all, do all these kinds of visualizations. Uh, and then there's the tools of visualization, like color, uh, all yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. That y you're, you're absolutely right. They're actually not taught very much. Right. Like the art of visualization. Not taught. And we love as well color coding. Like when you represent something mathematically, you can show color to show the growth. Yeah. And kind of code that. So if I have an algebraic expression for a pattern, Maybe I show the X with a certain color, but also write in that color so you can see the relationship. Very cool. And um, yeah, we particularly in our work with elementary teachers, many of them come to our workshops and they're literally in tears when they see things making sense visually mm -hmm. because they've spent their whole lives think not realizing you can really understand things with these visuals. It's quite powerful. You say that uh, there's something about, there's something valuable to learning when the thing that you're doing is challenging, is difficult. So a lot of people say, you know, math is hard or math is too hard or too hard for me. Do you think math should be easy or should it be hard? I think it's great when things are challenging, but there's something that that's really key to being able to deal with challenging maths, and that is knowing that you can do it. And I think the problem in education is a lot of people have got this idea that you're either born with a maths brain or you're not. So when they start to struggle, they think, oh, I don't have that maths brain. And then they will literally sort of switch off in their brain and things will go downhill from that point. So struggle becomes a lot easier and you're able to struggle if you don't have that idea but you know that you, you can do it. You have to go through this struggle to get there, but you're, you're able to do that. And 
So we're hampered in being able to struggle with these ideas we've been given about what we can do. I ask a difficult question here. Yeah. So there's kind of, um, I don't know what the right term is, but some people are um, struggle with learning in different ways. Like their brain is constructed in different ways. Mm -hmm. And um, how much should, as educators, should we make room for that? So how do you know the difference between this is hard and mm -hmm. I don't like doing hard things versus my brain is wired in a way where I need to learn in very different ways. I can't learn it this way. Mm -hmm. How do you find that mm -hmm. line? How do you operate mm -hmm. in that gray area? So this is why being a teacher is so hard and people really don't appreciate how difficult teaching is when you're faced with, I don't know, 30 students who think in different ways. and um, But this is also why I believe it's so important to have this multidimensional approach to maths. We've really offered it in one way, which is, here's some numbers and a method, you follow me, do what I just did, and then reproduce it. And so there are some kids who like doing that and they do well, and a lot of kids who don't like doing it and don't do well. But when you open up maths and you give you let kids experience it in different ways, maybe visually, with numbers, with words. What happens is kids, there are many more kids who can access it. Mm -hmm. So those different brain wirings you're talking about, where some people are just more able to do something in a particular way, that's why we want to, that's one of the reasons we want to open it up so that there are different ways of accessing it. And then that's not really a, a problem.